Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Welcome to Grace Healing. My name is Andreas and I have with me Larry again today. Hey Larry, how are you doing? Great, wonderful. Good. Well, today, today's discussion, we want to start really broad and then go into a, a direction, let's see where God leads us. Um, the basic question is, what is God? You know, do, how do we see the perfection of God and how do we maybe share it with each other? Right. So I know, Larry, you have a lot of thoughts and it, this has been moving you lately too, that question. So most what, definitely. And it's, it's something that's been on my heart often, you know, throughout the years, we see such an example of people that are in this constant state of worship and this constant state of, um, you know, like almost like a striving nature. They're striving into being seen how they can example their worship of God. And even when I was younger, I used to look at that saying this, something seems off because in my heart, and I would ask the viewer here, do you believe that God is perfect? Do you believe that God is limitless? Do you believe that God is true love? Now, if we do believe this, we also have to search God's presence within us and say that if God is perfect, is God without ego? And in my humble opinion, I believe that God is without ego. God is limitless. God is per perfect. God is omnipresent, omnipotent. Every aspect of the nature of that which could form a universal creation that is so beyond our expanse and understanding. And even the whole, if you take into the sciences of things and every time science comes to the end of its understanding, there is the face of God. And you look at things like the quantum science is now working in the health field and working in all the different things that are revealing things. I can pray over somebody sitting in Booth Bay Harbor, Maine, and I'm praying over somebody in New York, and a friend of mine is not even on the phone with us, but hooked up to a quantum um, skio system, quantum biofeedback, and everything we're praying about is showing up on their computer screen. And, and the, the limitless nature of that which is God that formed this creation, the author of all creation to me, is this God without ego. And I don't believe that God manifested aspects of itself, created forms of life, just to make it subjected to itself. And what we see in the worship process is people that are moving in this place where they're subjected to a place of rule. And what I find is this awesome wonder of adoration in me instead of worship. This, this drawing of love, this, this recognition that, oh my God, God is just awesome. And I wish to be more a part of that awareness of God within me through adoration, through love, through respect, through honor, through awe. And that is what is manifested within scripture in some places where it does speak to it, right? That we are to hold Yahweh Elohim in awe above all things of creation. That, to me, speaks to a process of adoration, a process of awe, splendor, magnificence, and loving embrace, not <gasps> cowering back or not worshiping in such a way that we are bound to a limitation. We are open to the limitless nature of our God. And, and in that, and I see you smiling now, <laughs> it moves to this place where we were originally thinking before we were in prayer and stuff, um, where we were originally thinking about the difference between evangelism and evangelos to, to be that. So, but I can uh, see you're. Well, stirring. I was just, I was smiling because I was just meeting my own human nature there for a moment, you know, that likes to be boxed in, into systems, yep. into you know, well-known uh, environments, religion, maybe, you know, that is kind of like a support, at least it seems yep. to us that way. Maybe yep. we limit ourselves so we cannot see the limitless nature of God because we hold on to these boundaries that right. probably don't exist. We hold on to support mechanism instead of 
the source, the author. Right, but then at the same time, we have this need that we need to, uh, you know, evangelize or that we need to proclaim to others, hey, this is the way and this is the only way you can right. be happy, you can but find God. What if God. the proclamation shifts from a directive to a living example? What if we were in, like, like you and I were talking about this before, and I think you looked up the definition of the words and stuff like that, but evangelism is defined in its nature as the desire to bring people, or how does it say it? Um, well, it, it also says, says, well, it also says spreading, from a Christian point of view, it's just spreading the, the gospel or spreading the good news. In a broader sense, it's a zealous advocacy of a cause. Right. And like there was one definition that I also saw that said to evangelize is the process of converting people to the ways of the gospel. And in my heart, what I see is more of an evangelos that it is not that I would go out and teach and direct people to a certain way of thinking, but that I would live the presence of God within me so that others might be attracted from within themselves to God within them. And I'm not about to convert somebody to a certain measure of belief, especially as we witness so many times throughout different aspects of scripture that have been altered, even to the simplistic aspect that the name Yeshua was the name given before time, but then throughout the course of 900 years, it became Jesus and Jesus and Jesus. And then after 900 years, it was finally solidified within the scripture to become Jesus instead of calling upon the original name. And there's even points within scripture that speak to the nature of those that are governed in the spiritual or the demonic will not even be able to utter the name. And I see people that are deeply steeped in the spiritual realm and influenced by the demonic that speak the name Jesus all day long. You utter the name Yeshua and they cringe and draw back and start to get angry and angered at the fact that you're not speaking the name Jesus. And, th and they've lost sight of this process of what is the original vibrational attributes of our living God. So if we go back to this evangelistic or evangelos state, the evangelos state would be the living manifestation of God, living the holy attributes of God, living the nature of the pure, loving, adoring nature of God. And then instead of people being instructed to a process of change, they would search within themselves to wonder, what is it about this person that attracts me? What is it about this person that brings me comfort? And if a person standing in that place of the comforter is honest and integritous and truthful, they will say, it is not me. It is God within me that brings you comfort. When you found healing, I am not a healer. You found healing because it is God within you that expressed healing into you. And I was just blessed to be here to share this experience with you. I am not the healer. I am not the evangelist. I am the individual that has been gifted the opportunity. It's not by my power. God gifted me the opportunity to wake to his presence. I didn't do it by any magnificent climb up a mountain to find some Tibetan leader of some sort that taught me these things. It was by grace that it manifested in me or you or others that we have any inclination or recognition of God within us. Therefore, if I'm going to embrace adoration of God to adore this amazing source and creator that has allowed me to awake in such a way that I can sit with somebody else and help them remember the authorship of their being, the, the amazing nature of God in them as them whole and restored and healed. That would be to me the true measure of adoration instead of worshiping, fawning off and going into a place that is almost like, 
Um, at times when I've seen it in different congregations, it, it, it becomes disassociative. You, you, you almost want to step away from it because it's becoming imbalanced. It's becoming striving in such a way that a person, you watch people within the crowd becoming uncomfortable with it. And they're, they're like drawing back. And to me, that does not evidence God and the adoration and drawing toward God. It's a int very interesting concept. I looked up this evangelos term, which I have never yeah. heard before until you mentioned it. And it is actually a Greek name as well. And the American name Evan comes from okay, that. Yes. And I didn't even know that. And evangelos really means the messenger. And evangelizing is cool. the message, right? So I'm looking yeah. at almost, I'm looking at it this, that maybe we have lost our way to be a living messenger through that adoration that you describe it versus what we too often do refer to a text or a system you know that's exactly. presented to us and talk yep. about it so we can instead of to talking, me this goes back to one of our root understandings within grace healing god first yeah. what's happened within the systems of man they're hopeful to point people to a system so they might potentially find God. In ours, we wish to point people toward God so they can look upon the systems and find the good that supports the adoration of God. And you don't become shackled or bound by the instructions of man. You become open to that which is God and you function to increase people within every belief system. You aren't limited to a certain construct. You become an instrument that helps people to see the greater value of their system that they embrace and how they can function more clearly within it. Well, and here's a challenge. I looked up some statistics. There's about 2.1 billion Christians. There is about, I think it's 1.8 billion, um, uh, what is the next one? Uh, Islam, Muslims, yes. and Hinduism has uh, just under a million, etc. And how it seems is that these religions evangelize, they shout out their message, trying to convert people, like you said. Exactly. So what, what you know, and Yahshua, uh, he talked to people one on one and made a difference, right? right? Very often. Okay. So how can we, how can we act differently and live differently in view of all these big systems that are in place. And, you know, well, it's Israel. beautiful that you picked the example that is Yeshua in the fact that he lived it, moved with grace, moved with love, moved in a way that shook the system. I mean, even, I mean, there's a lot of people don't understand the um, anthropology of what was going on in that time, but there was a lot that was unfolding just in Yeshua's nature. There would be like Mary sitting at his feet as he was teaching to the crowd or to the disciples. The one that was sitting at his feet was a woman that was unheard of. And in that time, the only person that sat at the foot of the teacher was the highest student, the highest disciple, the highest order of understanding of that which the teacher carried. So here they describe in scripture, and it just go, kind of goes by people in the Christian mindset. They don't understand it, even as they mentioned, oh, as Mary sat at Yeshua's feet while he was teaching, that quick little statement, they don't even understand the importance and significance of it. Yeshua living his nature, allowing for and welcoming this amazing woman at his feet was totally breaking down the walls of institution during that time. They were totally aghast and shocked that the supreme teacher of that group in their eyes or that sect in their eyes was allowing a woman to sit at his feet. So the evangelos, the nature of being became the very thing that shook the institutions. Walking through the crowd as a woman reached to his cloak, he lived, walked, and moved. And with the grace of God, God, his presence, God through Yeshua, as he perched and reached and touched the cloak, the crowd felt the energy move out. He didn't walk around yelling, screaming, spouting, shining, glorifying, coming down from the clouds. He walked with peace and quiet. When was he walking upon the water? Alone, 
going to an individual, not waiting for the crowds to see him walk upon the water, but he lived it in such a way that it was able to be converted and conveyed to others. And to me, if we could embrace this reality that God is within us always, the author is not just the author that expressed a book, but the essence of the author lives within the book. <clears throat> and within that book, if we search God's presence first, then draw to the book, you may gain a different understanding from the living book than I do. And I can embrace no judgment for how God is utilizing you within the manner of his creation. So it comes back to the basics, that pause, that moment, that gap becomes God first. Then we move to this recognition that, am I truly manifesting the nature of God in my encounter? And am I freed from judgment? Because it says, judge not lest you be judged. Am I able to walk with this to actually listen and to observe and to discover and to become what I am supposed to be as a hollow instrument so that God flows through me just as Yeshua allowed himself to be as God flowed through and manifested healing upon this woman and her blood stopped. The bleeding that she was encountering for months on end ended in a heartbeat. And again, it is as Yeshua walked, moved, and was the living presence of God. So we can choose to emulate that aspect. We can become the living presence of God. Yeah, we live in a noisy world. And uh, what I get out of this message here is we need to learn again to be silent, go within, practice introspection, uh, to get rid of that noise, because that noise is evangelism in a way, you know, in a broad sense. It's like exactly. stuff coming at us from all directions, yep. and we don't know what to do anymore. So, Larry, so with our pattern, what we always try to do is give maybe a step one, step two, step three recipe to our listeners. Well, we're going to go a little deeper on that one tonight. Okay. Today. Um, you know, as we do say that that gap moment becomes God. And then we do say that that gap moment, God would direct you to become that which is God. And then there would be a measurable result. I want to shift people to the importance of surrender. Because we have to come before God and die unto ourselves. We have to die to what we have formed and is an impression of who we are. We have to be willing to trust God enough to say that I release to you, God, all the limitations I have embraced through my life, all the constructs I've embraced through systems. And there was a time, this was years ago, probably, well, 25 years ago, maybe more, that I came to this place and I was looking at how the church was describing Yeshua. And I was just like, this is not of truth. And I started, I, it must have been about six o'clock in the evening because nobody was home. It was a weekend that my wife, at the time I was married, my wife and the children were gone. They were gone off to a friend's for that weekend. Actually, I think it was family cookout or something. And I just, I just, I was in a place where I just started dying onto the nature of what I thought I knew. I let go of all the things that I thought the church taught me. I let go of all the limitations that I thought. I even let go of that name Jesus that I was given in the church because I didn't feel truth within it anymore. And I, I just died unto self. <clears throat> and this went until the early AM hours from like six clock because I, I did not choose to take dinner into my body. I was fasting throughout the day. And I just came to this place where I had to die to these constructs I embraced. I died to this construct that the answer was only the medical system. I died to this construct that the answer was only man. I died to the construct that science was an answer. And I died to this concept that Jesus was Jesus. And I just cried out to God. And that's when Yeshua, Yeshua, alami o kateria karom, avel muyokorafias mesiano. The living presence of God emerged within me in names and understandings that I hadn't been taught. 
It was by letting go of my embrace of religious upbringing, Christian instruction, evangelistic views, um, evangelical free kind of mindsets within the Christian church. It was when I died to these views that I found the presence of God within me and was able to see what I had been shown throughout my life, why there was changes within scripture, why these different things. And it came by surrender. It came by a willingness to embrace trust in the gift of faith, trust in God, that God could reach through the veils that I had formed and reveal God's self. To let go of what I thought I knew as truth, to search one thing, God. And crying out, there were times where it was like a rending from my body. You could feel it like ripping I was letting go of constructs and limitations. Now, I'm not saying somebody has to go through this experience, but all I can tell you is from my experience, it came by honestly finding these constructs, these experiences, the things that I went through in my past, the times where I was hurt, the times where I was beaten, the times where I was raped. And I was like, these have nothing to do with how God created me. I want to discover that which is God that preceded this human form that was Larry. And I surrendered and I reached and I poured out and I surrendered all that I thought I knew. And God took me into this place of tears. And then finally at 2 p.m., I mean, 2, 2 a.m. in the morning, I was like, God, the intensity of God's presence was so powerful that I had to say, God, please take your hand from me. Because it was so powerful, so direct, so experiential that I had, to, I had to take that breath in that moment and just be with God. Stop searching and be. So the answer to your question of where we should go is to honestly surrender constructs we formed, surrender them all, invest the time that it takes for you. God, it's limitless. It's instantaneous. We have to go through the process of surrender. And whatever time it takes to do it, if you find it takes you one hour, three hours, seven hours, six hours, or in my case, over seven hours to peel through these constructs of how I was named as a son, how I was named as a friend, how I was named as an altar boy, how I was named at this, how I was named at one who was raped, how I was named at one who was killed and buried in the ground. When all these things, I had to let go of all these things, I discovered God in that which I was before this human form. Not in my mother's womb, but before it. And then I was able to move with God as God's presence to the definition of how God wanted to use that form in this earthly state, not how the earthly state had altered it to become something else. So it is that simple aspect of surrender, searching the creation of that which is God and becoming through surrender that peaceful awareness. Now that I've discovered God, I sit with God. I don't try to define God. I don't try to write a book about God. I don't try to find how the systems of man describe God correctly. I just sat with God's presence from about then until about 6 a.m. And I just sat there and I cried and I had tears of joy and I had tears of blessing and I had tears of peace. And then I found more things rended and pulled away from me. That's my personal experience. That's awesome. Uh, that I can't add anything to this except that the word is surrender. If we can yes. practice surrender, yeah. then we are on our way. And if I can say to the people here that just, there is something so powerful on the other side of that surrender that if people can honestly do it. They will find that the limits of what they've been given in the earth are so limited. They, they, they really, there is such an adoration that can grow in you for God that it's just indescribable. Yeah. It, you can't put it in words and I can hear it in your voice that, you know, that it's touching you. And I think we all have to go through that experience to fully understand it. So it thank you so much for sharing that. And I think we're coming to the end of our time today. Yes, and I just want to point out, point out again to our listeners, go to gracehealing.org, our website, where you find a lot of resources, videos, a, a, a newsletter you can subscribe to where we tell you about our meditation call on Wednesday nights and gracehealing.video, a direct link to our YouTube channel. So please visit it 
you may find some very interesting things that will help you day in and day out. Well, until next week. say the end of our time. Yeah. <laughs> I say the beginning of our walk. <laughs> there we go. I like it. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And we'll talk again next week. Blessings and much love to you all. Take Thank care. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.